So before the video gets started, I just wanted to note that if you run into any problems with this tutorial, or if you have some questions about other notebooks and machine learning art, make sure to comment down below, as well as join the Neuralism Discord server that's linked in the description down below. Real talk, you ever wish you could make one art piece into a hundred? Like you know you draw something, feel like it looks good, and you wish you could have a bunch of art pieces that look like it? In other words, in a way developing your own style? Well, with the recent developments in machine learning, algorithms have been developed that are capable of creating and manipulating art. These algorithms are for the most part open source. Now being that this video is marketed towards artists really, none of that probably makes sense to y'all, but going forward, keep it in the back of y'all minds because for research purposes, that's what you gotta be thinking about. So all this is gonna be powered by a Google Colab notebook that I've linked in the description down below. I'm gonna do my best to try to keep this as simple as possible for those of you who have minimal to no experience using Google Colab. So there's a lot of these algorithms running around nowadays like PyTTI, VQGAN, Disco Diffusion, JAX, just to name a few. But the one that I wanna focus on today is Looking Glass because I feel like for most up and coming artists, this is a really, really powerful tool. To keep this information as digestible as possible for you beginners, this is literally just a guide to get you up and running. If you want to know the inner workings of this algorithm, let me know and I'll make a video discussing that after some research. In order to run machine learning algorithms, we need really, really powerful computers. Now, chances are you don't have that, not only because of the chip shortages, but because we're talking a serious amount of computation power. This is why we are in Google Colab. Google Colab allows us to access Google's fleet of cloud computers. Simply put, you're using your computer to tell a much stronger computer what to do. In order to use Google Colab in this notebook properly though, it requires you to have a Gmail account. Just before we jump in, Google Colab is free, but if you want access to stronger, more capable computers with more RAM and stronger CPUs as well as GPUs, you can pick up a Pro or Pearl Plus subscription. This is important to keep in mind, but way over the scope of this beginner introduction to Looking Glass. After you open the notebook link below, the first thing you're gonna do is click file and save a copy and drive. Now I'm not gonna do that because I already did it. But after you do that, it should open up another window. And if it doesn't, it should ask you, make sure to click yes. And then you're gonna close off that old notebook. So we're gonna be working out of this copy. Now I just wanna note that I'm not the person who created this, nor did I create this notebook. All the credits and licenses are included in this notebook as well as the terms of use. I highly implore you to review this information to avoid any trouble in the future as well as give some appreciation to the people who actually created this tech. So to get started, I want you to scroll down to the section titled Parameters. I know we're skipping a lot, but remember this is just a quick introduction. I want you to look past all the specifics and just get it up and running. So where it says file to train here, we're going to be passing in our image. Now the image that I'm going to be using personally is this one here. It's just a quick doodle I did, but something to note is that I made sure to fill in the face here just to make it a little easier for the algorithm to tell the subject from the background. So we got to upload that file into our notebook. The way we're going to do that is by clicking this little folder icon here. Now to actually upload the file, and notice it started the notebook when we did that. Anyway, we're gonna click this uh, icon here that's gonna allow us to upload our file. We're just gonna wait for that file to finish uploading here. So notice our file finished uploading here, it's called drawing.png. So we're gonna make sure to transfer that name into file to train here. Now, unless you name your image the same as mine, make sure to put the correct name for your image as well as the file type. Mine is a PNG, as you can see. So I'm going to keep that, but yours could be a JPEG or something else. Keep it in mind. So from there, I just want you to scroll down to collage options. So with collage options, I want you to keep everything for the most part the way it is. Just keep it at four images because unless you have a Pro or Pro Plus subscription, you're probably not going to be able to run that. Now with the collage amount, unless you're going to be sitting 
here actively, you know, every once in a while moving the mouse or looking at the notebook, I would suggest dropping that just because it's going to be running for a while. The, the higher you have this, you know, it's pretty much how many images you're going to get. I, I believe each collage, since we have four images, it's going to be four images. So that would be a total of 400 images. I could be wrong, though. I got to double check that. So the last two things I want to discuss before we start running it are the output resizer and the fine tuning options. With the output resizer, I don't want you to use it, even if you have a Pro or Pro, Pro Plus subscription, because there's other algorithms like ESR GAN that are also in uh, Colab notebooks that do a way better job at um, upscaling images. So I, I prefer for you to use that, and I'll make a video showing you how to do that. And for the fine tuning options, this don't touch it at first just get yourself up and running if you notice your images are coming out way too wonky or too different this is you can tweak these two settings the epoch amount if they're too different you can turn it up if they're too the same you can you know put it down i find 70 as a good resting point and for the universe similarity that just it really does tweak the way the images come out. I don't I don't want to say exactly what it does because in my research using different images, it kind of has different effects. Sometimes it can make it so that there's more colors in the images. Sometimes it can make it so that there's gender variation. I can't really give you a, a for sure answer as to what it does. I would just say play around with it. So now you're going to go up to the top here where it says uh, runtime. You're going to click run all. When we click run all, it's gonna ask us to connect to our Google Drive. I'd suggest you do. After that, it's pretty much gonna run all these cold blocks, which that's not something for you to worry about. I don't want you to stress out about any of this. Just let it do what it's doing. If anything, just scroll down to where it says, generation and just wait here because that's where you're actually going to see what's happening and since this is a very uh beginner friendly overview i don't want you guys to shy away or get nervous well, this does take a while so i'm just going to time lapse through it to make sure the video is uh pretty short but keep in mind that you'll be waiting here for a few minutes All right, so where you see your images will emerge here and this progress bar, that means everything's working properly. It's gonna start generating our images. We'll actually start to see them once it reaches 1024, which is gonna show us a set and then begin the next set. So in, in other words, going up here, it's gonna show us a collage and then proceed to the next collage. So we got our first set of images. Now I'm gonna let maybe one or two sets come out more and then I'll time lapse to the end and show you how to actually get your images. So as you can see, here's another set. Now I just wanna note that as you can see that our input image is being included in every single collage. If that's something that you don't want when you run yours, Scroll up to um, collage options and here where it says skip GT, that's skip ground truth. If you check that option before you hit run all, you'll be able to see your collages without the input image in them, which is great. It actually gives you another generated image. So in my opinion, it's, it's the better choice. Mm, that's a good one right there. I like that one. Ooh, this one's real funky. <laughs> All right, so I did run this earlier. So I do have outputs already, although they look nothing like these. It's always unique. So I'm going to stop this. And notice that when I try to stop it, it's not going to stop. That's fine. Just wait. Do not click yes on that option. <laughs> Just wait until you get that error there. And then I want you to scroll down 
and press play on this. This is what actually gives us our images. And notice that after I press play here, it didn't come up here, the output zip. So I had to click this button here, the refresh uh, directory. When I click that, we were able to see this. Now, if you double click this, it's gonna download. And that's actually where your images will be located. So, oh, it looks like I already unzipped it. You may have to unzip it. Mine already came unzipped, so that's great. Um, but I'll show you another set just so you can see what you can get out of this. Let's see. So here's a folder of some outputs that I was able to get. I'm just gonna click through some of them so you can see some of what this algorithm is capable of, but also keep in mind, you know, tweaking the epoch amount as well as the universe similarity will change uh, the output images. So let's look at that one. I like that one, that's clean. Look at this. Like, what is that? That is awesome. <laughs> get that, that's very clean. And like, it's just so amazing. Like, look at the rotation. It really does look like somebody drew that. And mind you, I don't want you to, you know, think I'm overselling these images. You know, they're obviously very basic. They aren't the greatest, but the idea is there. You know, we came from this image that took me maybe 10 minutes to draw. I input it into this algorithm and now I'm just outputting more and more images. Look at this, that is so cool. It's a caricature. full rotation of the face. So yeah, that was just a brief overview of looking glass. I hope that wasn't too confusing. You know, I'm new to this YouTube thing. I don't know how to do tutorial videos, but I'm so interested in what these algorithms can do that I really do want to get this information out there to you guys, especially because I'm an artist and the last 10 years I've dedicated to trying to become a better artist and I know the struggle, I know. So anything I can do to help artists grow, I'm here for it. See you guys in the next one.